turn to Daniel chapter 7. Last week we studied Daniel 2. Daniel 7 is close to Daniel 2. Uh, the only difference, there's some differences, and then one of the differences is that Nebuchadnezzar got to dream in, in chapter 2, and Daniel gave the interpretation. Now, in chapter 7, Daniel gets the dream, and an angel interprets it for him. In chapter 2, you have this figure here. Remember the figure of the man here? This guy right here, see him right there? Each part of this man is a kingdom. Remember that? All the way down. How many remember that? Now, I'm, bringing, I'm going over to get you to remember each thing. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, that was Babylon. The next kingdom was the Mets and the Persian. Third kingdom was uh, Alexander the Great, the Greece, and then the Romans on down and then on down to the Antichrist and then the rock that destroys the kingdoms of the Antichrist which is Jesus Christ the rock hewn out of the mountain that's what you see right there okay now in chapter 7 look look right down here if you can see it these kingdoms are described as these different beasts do you see that same thing the lion here is Babylon, corresponding with the head here. So this is the, the vision and the dream that Daniel got. This is the dream here that Nebuchadnezzar got and Daniel interpreted it. Okay? So chapter 2, Daniel, chapter 7. But we have some things in here that's not up there. So that's where we're at at this point. So let's begin to read. In the first year of uh, uh, by Belzai Belzar, I'll get hold on, I'll get it. Belzazar, that's close, isn't it? <laughs> Linda says, <laughs> Belzazar, king of Babylon. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is out of the picture here. He's dead and he's gone. And now we've got another king, but Daniel is still alive. Daniel entered into uh, Babylon when he was about 16 years old. When uh, Babylon came into uh, Israel and captured Jerusalem and, uh, and the two tribes of Judah. Now remember the ten tribes of the north, who captured them? 200 years before Babylon came in and captured uh, Israel. The Syrians. The Syrians captured the ten tribes and took them off into captivity. Okay? Now, 200 years later, Judah, that's where uh, Jerusalem is, and the two tribes. 200 years later, then Babylon came in because of their sins. This was their punishment to take them off into captivity. Okay? All right, so... <clears throat> It says, Daniel had a dream, right here, and vision in his head as he was lying upon his bed. Then he wrote down the dream and told the guests of the matter. Number two, verse two. There we go, whoops. Daniel said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens, political and social agitations, were stirred up the great sea, the nations of the world. So when you see the word sea, it's either people or nations, okay? Uh, when you go over in, uh, Reve uh, in Revelation chapter 13, it says, the beast came out of the sea, the first verse. Remember that? The beast. Who was the beast? The Antichrist came out of the sea, out of the nations, okay? Verse 3. And four great beasts came up out of the sea in succession, 
and different from one another. All right, these four beasts. They, now they're calling these kingdoms beasts. Remember, we had a little discussion in our Sunday school class, and had somebody said, "Well, they were beasts." Well, they were. They are beasts in Daniel, but they weren't beasts in Revelation 13. Uh, put on the board real quick, like Revelation 13. And I've got to be careful because I've studied this for 50 years, and I know this is new to many of you. Look at uh, Revelation 13, verse 1. As I stood on the sandy beach, now who is speaking? John. John is speaking. Well, I'm falling apart up here. <laughs> All together now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Getting old is rough, I tell you. <laughs> I go home at night, I take my hearing aid out, I take my wig off, take my teeth out, take my glasses off, take my shoes off, take my clothes off. What's left? <laughs> All right. All right. So as, as John stood on the sandy beach, now remember John was lifted up into heaven. And when you read Revelation, there's times when God's talking about things in heaven, then he's talking about things down on the earth. Okay. Uh, in the, in the, um, Fourth chapter, Revelation, verse 1, a door was opened in heaven. Remember that? And the voice said, come up here. And John says, yeah. He went up. Okay. So he's seeing all of this. He's been, he says, I saw a beast coming out of the sea, out of the nations, out of the many people on the earth. And that beast was the Antichrist. All right. Now, look, it says, with ten horns and seven heads. And his, and his horns, he had ten royal crowns. Are those, those horns are kings. And the seven heads and the horns. All right. So you have, you have those um, ten royal crowns, ten nations, ten kings, blaspheming titles, names on, the, on his head. Uh, you might not understand what that is, but it don't sound very good, does it? <laughs> Sounds like a... Almost like the devil. Okay, now look at the last verse. Look at the last verse there in that chapter, verse 18. Revelation 13, uh, 13 uh, verse 18. I'm not slow down here now, Bob. All right, here we go. Here is room for discernment, a call for the wisdom of interpretation. Let anyone who has intelligence, penetration, and insight enough calculate the number of the beasts. Remember the beast, chapter 1? So who was the beast? For it is a human number. The number of a certain man. His number is 666. Somebody tell me who that is. Antichrist. Very simple, not complicated. You got that? All right. Go back to uh, Daniel now. Go back to Daniel. Now this is, a, we've got to study and take our time on this. All right, we're in verse 7. <clears throat> All right. So now, let's look at verse 3 again. And four great beasts. Who were these four great beasts? Now, we're talking about kingdoms here. Do you follow me? Who was the beast that came out of the sea? Somebody tell me. Antichrist. Remember, we just read... Uh, Revelation 13, verse 1. He came out of the sea, out of the sea of people, out of the nations. Okay. Now, these four great beasts were called nations. These nations beasts. Now, what do you mean beasts? <clears throat> Anybody ever seen a lion? They are a beast. You ever seen them tackle a big bull, take him down, chew him up? I mean, vicious claws. <laughs> beast. Okay. That's what these nations are called because of their evil, because of their striking out and tearing things apart and killing and murdering and all of that. That's what these kingdoms did, okay? They captured the world. They killed people. They killed babies. They cut people's heads off. They're beasts. All right, that's why they, 
God, peace. <coughs> okay. Now, last week, when we started with uh, Daniel 2, I started with the interpretation because of the time element. But tonight, I am uh, dealing and talking and giving the first the vision, and then we'll get the interpretation out of the Bible. Always remember, you, the Bible will, will give you a prophecy and then interpret it for you. In most cases, you'll see that. All right. So here we are, verse 4 now. All right, now we're talking about four beasts. Well, the first, all right, the first, the Babylon Empire under Nebuchadnezzar was like a lion. All right, here we go. There's a lion. Now in Daniel's dream that he dreamt personally, it describes Babylon as, and the king as a lion, Babylon. Do you see that in, in, in 7? But look up here now. In, in Daniel 2, a golden head. Remember that? The golden head? Okay, I hope I ain't mixing you guys up, but I'm doing the best I can. I mean, I just have to pin the, on your intellect and your brain, okay, operating. All right. <clears throat> look, at, look at it now. Look at the scriptures. Read it. The first, the first what? First beast. Four beasts, four kingdoms, four kingdoms called beasts. Babylon. What's the next one? Persia. Persia is Iran. Demet, Medes also. What's the third kingdom? Alexander the Great. How many has ever studied about Alexander the Great in the Bible? One, two, three. Buckle your shoe. For to get ready and are ready to go. Okay, so here we go. So it was like a lion. He ha he had eagle's wings. Well, what is you know what what do you need wings for? Well, you can get to somewhere real quick, like. So this lion is fast. Got wings. Can fly fast. <clears throat> know what it says? I looked till the wings of it were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon two feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. So here this whole thing stands up. Boop. Okay? All right, let's move on to the next verse. Now he's verse by verse describing these beasts. Everybody can hear me okay? I'm ta not talking too loud, am I? Okay. Now Daniel has said, In his dream, behold, another beast. A second one, the Medes and the Persian Empire or kingdom. Okay? So these four beasts represent four kingdoms. Now, let's stop right here. When you study prophecy, <clears throat> you need a little check. Check this off. Has Babylon come and gone? Is that first beast out of the picture now? Where we're standing, right where we're standing, you look back. And uh, uh, when where Daniel was, it was it was in the now, in his now. Okay, but where we're standing, it's in our past. Even history books will tell you about it. Okay, so that proves that only God knows the future. So God has given the future to Daniel, that he can understand what's going to happen to the Jews or the nations, the nation, uh, uh, that is the Jewish nation, in the future. This is all showing what's happening in the future. Now, right at that point, they are in Babylon. They're in captivity. You have to understand that they're in captivity. They've been removed out of their country. They are in captivity. What's going to happen to us as a nation? So God gives Daniel the dream. And therefore, he writes it down. And, be, and begins to show it to the people that our nation still has a future. Okay? And that future is the kingdom of God coming on the earth. Israel will be the number one nation. That's why the devil's over there fighting, trying to destroy all the Jews. There's only about 
16,000 Jews on the earth right now. I think 8,000, not 8,000. Yeah, 8,000, 800,000. 8 million. Oh, 8 million. That's, all right, 8 million in the United States. Thank you. And, and about 7 million in Israel right now. Okay. Now just think, in a sense, being that the 8 million Jews are over here in the United States, that's like being in Gosha. They're protected. How many sees that? How many don't see that? How many see that? The Jews are in, they're being protected right now. If you get them all over there, boy, uh, if Iran got that bump, he'd clear them all out of it just like that with one bump. Can you see the wisdom of God? So there's a big amount of, of, of the Jews have gone back to Israel. That's, that's in Ezekiel 37, if you want to read it. But there's eight uh, million over here that's protected. Just like when uh, the, <clears throat> the ten, uh, the ten what, in, 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 uh, in Egypt, the plagues, the ten plagues didn't bother the, the Jews because they were in where? Where were they at? In Gosha. That was a little area where the Jews lived, they were protected. But the Egyptians suffered all those curses that came upon them. So they, God protected them. I know I'm going a little too fast here, but at one point when the Antichrist really goes after the Jews, one third of them is going to escape and go into the wilderness, into the desert. And there's a place called Petra. How many ever heard Petra? It's a city there, a fortress like. And, and the Antichrist army is going to go after him. But something happens. He hears something's happening from the east. He's got to turn around and take his army and go after and deal with that. But God keeps them safe out there in the wilderness. Okay, so that's just a little something I drop in. You're not going to understand the whole thing, but you'll get little pieces and then ask each other's questions and ask, write questions down. Maybe we can clear it up in your mind. Okay, let's move it on because time goes by so fast. <clears throat> and behold, another beast. What is the beast? What is the beast? No, not here. We're talking about the kingdoms. Four kingdoms, four beasts. Remember that, Charles? Four beasts. <laughs> I'll just wake you up. I might sneak up on you. What is the four beasts? What's the four beasts? Kingdoms. Huh? Kingdoms. Kingdom. Four beast kingdoms. Nail it down. But in Revelation, the beast is the Antichrist. So the beast has a beast for a, 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 his, his kingdoms are beasts too. All right, now. <clears throat> in all of this, when you when we as we cover this, and I gotta move fast, you're gonna see the Antichrist spirit operating in these kingdoms. God uses these nations for his purpose. Okay? See, God is sovereign. And he deals with his people. Remember Habakkuk? Remember that message I preached on Habakkuk? Certainly you do. Just preached it five years ago. I mean, I just preached it three weeks ago. He got mad at God because God was using a heathen nation to punish the nation of Israel. They're worse than we are. Yeah, but they're not God's people. We're God's people. He's daddy. He's going to make sure he's going to correct his children because he loves us. If you're not being corrected by God, <coughs> you know, I don't want to say the word, but you say it. Charles say it. Bastard. Oh, Charles saying that in church. That's enough of that, young fella. That's enough. All right, let's move fast. A little humor. You're loosening you up. Now get your mind because you could drift off in no, no man's land. I know. I've been right where you're at. All right. So behold, another beast. So we're talking about the second one, the, Med, the Mets and the Persians. The Persians, remember back in those days, the, uh, our ram was called Persia. They changed it in 19, uh, somebody help me, 19 what, Thir 19, I don't know, somewhere back to 37, I think, I'm not sure. But anyway, they changed it to Persia. I mean, <clears throat> they changed it to Iran. And it raised up itself on one side, 
or uh, or one dominion and wow, three between ribs. its teeth, and it was told, Arise and devour much flesh. Well, you know, they say, Oh my goodness, what is all that about? Well, it's just this kingdom conquering other kingdoms, and the, the three ribs represents three kingdoms, and that one kingdom is going to devour those three, and just like a, you know, just rah, rah, you know, mm, mm, mm. Got that? Okay. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> See, some of this stuff will, uh, will fool you. It's just relaxing. It ain't that comic. After this, I look and behold another. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Has the Babylon kingdom come and gone? All right. That kingdom was in place on the earth when Daniel was on the earth. Okay. It's gone. Now, how in the world did they know that the next kingdom or the next beast at that time was going to come in place? Another nation was going to conquer Babylon, which was Persia, and be in place. They had the Bible. They knew the future. See, this is very important to understand. We're way down the line here, and we can look back and see all those kingdoms came into existence, and now they're all gone. Where we're at, but where Daniel was, they were not all gone. Not even Babylon was gone at that time. But, but then Babylon was whipped by Persia, and then he came over into that kingdom, and they used him, God used him in that kingdom so he got this dream of all these different kingdoms and all, all the way down to the end <coughs> of time. Okay, of, uh, of, and the Jewish nation knew that at the end that they were going to be triumph, that they were going to be the one nation that was going to really be uh, the kingdom of the earth, ruled by Lord Jesus. Okay, let's move on uh, real fast like now. All right, here we go. <coughs> All right, and this, this I looked, and behold, another, the, 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 the Grecian empire of Alexander the Great. Now, he was a young man. I think he died about 33 years. He was 33 years old when he died. He had conquered. He went all the way to India. He even conquered parts of India. But he had four generals. Okay, four generals. <coughs> Excuse me which his kingdom was divided in four different sections, and each kingdom, one of those general, general was the emperor or the king of each of one of those kingdoms. But Alexander and his generals and army co conquered them all, but when he died, they split it up in four kingdoms. Oh, we'll come to that. Like a leopard, he, in other words, that kingdom was like a leopard, Alexander, like, which had four wings of a bird on its back. Well, a wing can move, I mean, a, a bird can fly pretty fast, can't it? Think of a leopard, how fast they are. So his army moved fast, and I mean, just ripped and tore people and, and our armies up. They were they, just, they had no chance. He was just so fast. All right, look at what it says. The beast had also four heads. All right, that's Alexander's generals, the four generals. Remember I said the four generals? His successors and dominion was given to it. So those four generals, the kingdom was divided in four different sections. When you go over there in Europe, you'll see all the different sections, okay? So that was a period of time. But now we look back. All that has happened. All of that's fulfilled. This is where our faith should say, well, man, the Bible's really true. Can you see that? Who knows the future? A fu future, that's a future. <laughs> future but God. So our faith said, golly, God knew all those nations were going to come in play. Now we're down here, down the road, and we see they've come and gone. Well, don't that do something for you? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it does something for me. Are we getting this? You getting this? Okay, I want you to teach it after I finish. <laughs> it might, is it too confusing for you? Should we talk about something else? Let's talk about hell. That 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 wake us up, wouldn't it? 
But what I want, I want your faith to be energized to see that God knows how it's all going to work out. It was, it was prophesied years ago, written down in the book. And here we are down the line and we can look back and see everything that God said came true, came true, came true, came true, came true. So you can take this all through the Bible and see all the things that he did has come true. Woo! It makes you want to shout. Makes you want to speak in tongues. <laughs> all right, class, wake up. <laughs> all right, we got that. That's the third, third, third. Okay, all right, this next verse. After this, I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast. And what is the beast? A kingdom. Kingdom. <laughs> and it's the Roman Empire. Okay, that beast is the Roman Empire. <laughs> Terrible, powerful, and dreadful. Now, that kingdom was in place when Jesus Christ was born on the earth. How many know that? Right. All right. <laughs> And exceedingly strong. They captured Palestine. They captured all of those Arab nations over there. And it had a great iron teeth. It devoured and crushed and trampled what was left with its feet. And it was different from all the beasts that came before it. And it had ten horns symb symbolically Ten kings. So horns are kings. So here we go. Each part of this uh, statue represents each kingdom. Remember that? All the way down to Rome. Each of these beasts here represents all the way down to, to uh, Rome. Okay? Vicious looking. Critters. Now, let's go to the next verse. I considered the horns, Daniel is talking, and behold, there came up among them another horn, a little horn. Whoop. <laughs> Who's that little horn? Come on, somebody be brave. Antichrist. <laughs> Antichrist. All right. The little horn, there it is, popped up, boop, boop. Before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things, which tells you that little horn is a man. Do you see that? How many see that? When you read scriptures, even though it might not say a man, it, but the, the description describes a man. Eyes like the eyes of a man. And a mouth speaking. How many know the Antichrist blasphemed God? You understand that? We go in and study all about the Antichrist. Antichrist you'll see that he, was a, he blasphemed God. Okay, I can't give you everything at one time, but I'm trying to go with, keep it as simple as I can. All right, let's go to the next verse. I kept looking until thrones were placed for the successors with the judge. Now, all of a sudden, Daniel begins to see heaven here. The eternal father. Now, notice this. And the ancient of days. That's God, the eternal father. So now he's seeing, he's seeing these thrones in heaven. God, the father sitting on one. He's the ancient of days. These other thrones, 20, 24 elders. And the, and the ancients of days, God, the eternal father, took his seat. Now, can you see the picture? It's like a judge setting. You ever been to court? Everybody's sitting there. All of a sudden, the door opens. The judge comes out, and everybody stands up, and the judge sits down. That's our heavenly father. Now, let's see what's going to happen. Whom garment was white as snow... And the hair of his head like pure wool, his throne was like the fiery flames, its wheels were burning fire. Now, so many times, remember Paul says, I know no man after the Spirit. I don't even know the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I know no man after the flesh. 
But I know men now after the Spirit. See, as you grow in the Lord, your spirit begins to dominate and, and controls, and you can see. See, the Spirit has eyes. May the eyes of their heart be enlightened in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 3. Remember that? So you can see, your spirit can see back here. I don't even have to look and I can discern and see if something, if the spirit is on me, I can see behind me. When, I, uh, when we drove up in my driveway a, a year ago, Susan got out of the car first, which she never does, and begins to walk to the front of the car. I open the door and there's a copperhead right there. She didn't even look. She saw in the spirit. She said, Bob, there's a spirit. There's a, a, a snake there. You can see things in the spirit. All right, go back to the prophet. Elijah saw there's more with us than them. What did God, what did the prophet Isaiah do? He prayed, Lord, my servant. Remember the servant went outside, he saw this vast army of, of human beings. That, I mean, there was a host of, of, of powers of, of, of human beings. And he run back and said, Master, we're surrounded. And Elijah said, <sighs> Lord, open his eyes. Folks, when your eyes are open, you, gotta, you walk different. You think different. You are different when you can see into certain points of the spirit world. And I thank God I've had some experience in that. And boy, am I a believer 100%. Open his eyes, Lord. Everybody say, that's a good prayer. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Spiritual eyes. That I might see there's more with us than them. Wow, powerful. Susan saw that snake in the spirit. Said, Bob, watch that snake there. I opened the door and there the snake was. Copperhead. I'd step right on him. I said, Susan, come over here and grab that snake and kill it. <laughs> I thought I'd wake you up on that. All right, class, behave now. All right, look, let's go to the next one now. All right, now, I'm going to stop right there. Turn over to, to um, uh, Revelation. Now, this is going to give you a little better understanding that, that, that about Jesus up there in heaven. Revelation chapter 1. <sighs> look at verse um, 13, okay? 13, Revelation 1, 13. Everybody ready? Look at it. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, who was the son of man, clothed with a robe which reached to his feet and with a girdle of gold about his breast. Now, who is that? That's the son of man. That's Jesus. Next verse. And in the midst are his head and his hair were white like white wool. Where'd you read that at? Over in Daniel. Do you remember that? You read that over in Daniel. And his eyes flashed like a flame of fire. Everybody see that? All right, that's fire. Now that's a different Jesus than most people know. That's the resurrected Jesus. All right, go back to Daniel. Next verse. In Daniel, chapter 7. Let's read that again in, in verse 9, okay, about, about, about our Heavenly Father. Okay, you went to, no, it's uh, 9, verse 9, 7, 9. I kept looking until thrones were placed for the assessor, assessors with the judge. Okay. These successors are the, are the uh, uh, 24 elders or, with the judge. Judge is God the Father, the Ancient of Days, God, the Eternal Father, took his seat. 
whose garments was white as snow. Did we read that over Revelation? Okay. How many of you know Jesus and the Father is one? There's one God manifesting himself in three distinct persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Okay. Let's go to the next verse now. We've got to move fast. The time is going like lightning. <laughs> Takes time to unfold this. Verse 10. A stream of fire came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. That is, the, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Father. Ten thousand times ten thousand rose up and stood before him. The judge was seated. The court was in session and the books were open. So what does all that mean? Time for judgment. Time for judgment. The judge is going to judge, and then we're going to see a lot of things on earth happen during the tribulation years. All of those judgments are going to come forth, and they're all right because God is perfect. So the books were open. All right. Notice all the thousands of people up there. I like that. I wonder where those people came from. Can you see yourself in that group? Hmm? Yeah, look at that. I see Missy right up there. Look at that. Ten th look at that. Yeah, there's Rick. Who's that other person there? That, that looks like, yeah. yeah. You, all, you see yourself there? Yes, Class? You got to see yourself in the Bible. All right, let's go to the next verse. I look then because of the sound of the great words which which the horn was speaking. Wow, now we're back to earth. There's the setting, the judge, all the successors up there going to judge. All of a sudden, boom. Now we're seeing, all of a sudden, I look then because of the sound of the great words, which the horn, who's the horn? Who's the horn? Antichrist. Remember? Antichrist. Antichrist. Got it. Was speaking. So that he, he's a human. He's a, he, you're getting it there, Reverend Ray Charles. I love you. Charles already got it. <laughs> I, he says, I watched until the beast, who, I watched, I, who, who's, he? that's Daniel. I watched until the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given over to be burnt with the fire. All right, we know what happens to the Antichrist, but let's move on. See, he's, he's showing you future things here. Okay. Um, what sometimes is confusing because we like to think, see things one, two, three, four in sequences. Sometimes it may not be in sequence. He may jump a year in the future and talk about an event and then come back. And then maybe six months if I talk about another. So the basic thing we want to see that the Antichrist, even though he's going to do a lot of damage on earth, he's going to do his thing, he's going to curse God, he's going into the temple and sit down and declare himself to be God, we know the end for that dude. And he's going to be in the lake of fire. Now when you read um, Revelation 20, we see the false prophet, who is a beast, the Antichrist is a beast, their kingdoms are beasts. <clears throat> We're going to see the... The, the Antichrist, not, not Satan, Satan is put in the pit because he's going to come a thousand years in the future and come and fool the nations. Remember that. But the Antichrist and the, and the false prophet will go into the lake of fire in Revelation 20. Everybody got that? But the devil's cast into the bottomless pit for 1,000 years, which he comes up at the end of the million years and, and deceives the nations, and then but the, by the breath of God, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. He's thrown in the lake of fire to burn forever and ever and ever. All right, I just see, see, I just ran forward. I skipped a lot of things, but see, I just ran forward and told you that, and then I come back all the way back. All right, look what it says. Next one. As for the rest of the beasts, their power, dominion was taken away. Now, this is important to understand. Yet their lives were prolonged for the duration of their lives was fixed for a season and a half. Now, what you have, you have these countries over there right now. You have Persia, but they're not dominating the world. 
Babylon, uh, Babel, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar is not there. The earth. Those kingdoms of Iran are still there. Persia is still there. Their ancestors. Greece is still there. But they're not dominating the world. Okay? They're still there. How many understand what I'm saying there? All right, very important you understand that. Okay. But their kingdoms and their king, their beasts, are gone. Now, what I, let's move on now. Let's go to the next verse. Now, I don't want to get ahead of it. I saw in the night visions, and behold, on the clouds of the heavens came one like a son of man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was pre presented before him. In other words, Christ came before the Father and was presented before the Father. And the Father now is going to give him the kingdom. All right, go to the next verse. And there was given him the Messiah, the Bazaar, Bazaar, I'm close, <laughs> dominion and glory and kingdom. Remember the last verse? He came before the Father, and the Father gave him the kingdom. And we're in that kingdom. Isn't that wonderful? That all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Who's him? Christ. Who gave him all these kingdoms of the earth now? God the Father. His dominion, that is Christ's dominion, is an everlasting dominion. Read Isaiah 9, 6. What does it say? A virgin shall give birth, remember? And it talks about Jesus and his kingdom. His government shall last forever. How many remember that in Isaiah? I think it's 9, 6, isn't it? 9, 6 or 6, 9, one of the two. 6, 9, I think it is. All right, don't have time to turn there. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom is one which shall not be destroyed. And God has invited us to take part in that kingdom. And he has given to us titles, kings and priests. And we will operate and be in our glorified body in his kingdom. But so far at where we're at, these other kingdoms are gone. Romans, the Roman kingdom is gone. But I want to show you something. Let's go to the next verse now. <coughs> now, as for me, Daniel, my spirit was grieved and anxious within me, and the vision of my head alarmed and agitated me. I mean, you may be like that right now. I don't know. <laughs> But see, I've had 50 years to sort this out, so I'm not a whiz, okay? I've studied the, the many commentaries and the many books and all of that. So to me, that's just like John 3, 16. See, once you get it, like anything in your mind, you got it, see? All right, let's go to the next verse now. I came near to one of those who stood there and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of the things. Now the Bible is going to give the interpretation of these things. Are we ready? I've got 20 minutes to unfold it for you. These four great beasts are what? Four kings who shall rise out of the earth. Four kings, and then go on to the next verse real quick. I'm going to move fast now. Yeah. But the saints of the Most High God shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Now all of a sudden he's skipping. Boop. Now he's in the future. Do you see that? Verse 1 talks about, and then all of a sudden, boop, way in the future, about the millennium years. Well, how many of you know, we know a lot of things in between is going to happen before that happens. But see how the Bible writes it down? Skips all those years. So you got to learn that one verse of Scripture and the next verse of Scripture may be a thousand years or two thousand years between those two verses. I wish I had time to just show you all the different Scriptures in the Bible like that. How many know that already? Yeah, I've taught that. All right. All right, let's go to the next verse. Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast. The fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly terrible and shocking, whose teeth were iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured and broke, crushed and trampled what was left with his feet. Who was that? Rome. Rome. Okay. He, he wants to know more about that. All right. Next verse. 
That is, Daniel wants to know more about that. Okay, and about the ten horns representing kings. Remember the horns representing kings? They had crowns on their horns that were on its head. And the other horn, which came up later, and who is that? Look at me. Look at this. Whoop. Who that? Huh? Who that? That little horn. See that little horn right there? <laughs> That's pretty big if we bring him down. About. That little horn right there. There you go. All right. The little horn is the Antichrist, which came up later. So, the Antichrist kingdom, he comes, over, he comes up later. Keep that in mind now. But why is we talking about the fourth kingdom? Because the Antichrist kingdom is just going to be like that fourth kingdom. Vicious. Strong. You see that? And that's why we call it the revised kingdom. The revised kingdom of Rome. So in a sense, it's like we get back to the feet. The, the, uh, the of ten toes. Remember, they were made of clay and iron. The iron was like Rome. The clay was brittle. Didn't have much backbone. It don't mix. So, so it had strength and yet it had weakness. Okay. All right, so, so what we ha have here, in a sense, in my, term, in my terminology, is like a branch coming off the Roman Empire, and the Antichrist kingdom is going to be like Rome was. You study about Rome, and uh, you get an idea like how his kingdom is going to be. Now, we know it doing his kingdom. Now, no notice this. I'm skipping. Verses, passing so many verses, and I'm going to go all the way down the line and say, now, in the kingdom of the Antichrist, you won't be able to buy or sell unless you take his mark. Now, if you take his mark, you will condemn your soul to hell. But it, on the other hand, if you take his mark, you can buy watermelon, apple pie, food. Now you're talking about a moment of decision. It's almost like the three Hebrew children that's going to be cast into the fire. That needs to be settled in our life right now. That was settled in my life years ago. I'm a dead man. You're looking at a dead man. I live for Christ. I'm not anything special. But see, I've read this and I understand that. And, and some of you understand that. And you're committed. And if you die, what's the big deal? Death ain't no big deal, because I ain't going to die. Jesus said, he that believeth in me shall never die. Amen. Now, who am I going to believe? I'm going to believe Jesus. So I'm not going to run around fearful of what happens to me. Take me out. I'll be up there in heaven. How many understand that? See, you've got to get that committed and dedicated. And a lot of these fears and anxieties and worried about, am I going to make it? Yes, you're going to make it. God says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. What is there to fear? If God be for me, who can be against me? See, once that gets into our being, it changes our lives. Now, God expects us to work. God expects us to keep ourselves alive. God expects a lot of things out of us. But when it comes down to where, all right, there's plenty of food, but you've got to have this stamp on your head and that mark put on your, on your hand. Now, the Revelation talks about that, but we don't have time to get that, into that. But let's move on real quick. Hallelujah. All right, what's the next? All right, and now look, this horn made war with the saints and prevailed over them. Now, we've got to stop here and say saints. What saints? We're, we're, we're in heaven when all this is taking place. What saints? Well, there's going to be people that's converted during the tribulation years. You're going to have the 144,000, remember that, uh, of Israelites. They're not the Jehovah Witness. 
How many of you understand they claim that? No, that's going to be uh, 12,000 from each tribe. Makes up 144,000. You have the two witnesses that will witness to, uh, to the world. And, no, and Antichrist can't do nothing to them until their mission is finished. And then they are killed by him or his men. Lays in the street for three and a half years. And, all, and everybody's celebrating. Hut, hut, you know, because they, those two witnesses, I mean, just kept preaching the word of God to the world. The most miserable person in the world is a person that's in church and don't want to be there. <laughs> but my wife said, I better come or she, you know what? <laughs> Anybody ever been there besides me? <laughs> come on, let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, there are times we backslide just a little bit, but by God's grace, he pops us back up again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Now, these saints are the Jews and those that are being converted during that period of time and war against those saints. Many of them had their heads cut off. And you'll find that in, Reve uh, in uh, Revelation 7 about those spirits under the altar up there. You remember that? Up under the altar up there. And then they ask God, well, when are, we gonna, when are you going to revenge our, the, the, what they've done to us? He said, a little while, there's other brothers that are coming up that have their heads cut off. And then you'll see, I'll take care of it. And during the tribulation, we, we see that. And then those, that group that was up there under the altar was resurrected in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. You can read it. And they got their glorified body. In fact, turn there real quick, like, because I know I'm going fast. See, I'm skipping. How many of you know I'm going, woo, in the future here now. Let's go to Revelation uh, 20, verse 4. Here we go. Revelation, verse 20, verse 4. Jesus is done came on the earth now. Then I saw thrones and sitting on them were those to whom authority to act as judges and to pass sentence was entrusted. That's us. I also saw the souls of those who had been slain with axes. You know, an axe, you know, if it's sharp, I, you know, it, it really has a clean cut. Now, a dull axe is rough. But a sharp axe, you ever had a sharp ni uh, knife and flipped your finger off or something? My, my uncle had two fingers. My uncle had, yeah, he had, he had these two fingers cut off right there. Those two fingers. See, when he was a little boy, his brother, they were playing with the axe. See, and, the, and, and his brother and, and, the, and my uncle said, I bet you can't hit it. And the guy, whoo, whoo, whoo. Two fingers missing. So I can't do that. <laughs> so anyway, they put his uh, little fingers in a, a, a jar of, of alcohol or something, of vinegar, and kept them for a while, you know. But he had two fingers that was gone. Just axe is sharp. When I was a young boy, about 12 years old, I was making a rabbit uh, house for my rabbit. And I'm coming down. Boop. I chipped a chunk out of my leg, and my, my mother uh, took me to the doctor, and I didn't let him sew it up. You ain't going to sew it up. I hollered, I mean, I was a meanie. So he finally pushed it together, put band-aids on it, and held it together, and it healed up. So I left the doctor, and I said, nye, nye, nye. I give Charles something to laugh at anyway. How many's been like that? Come on, huh? How about the needle? He's got this long needle. Okay, here we go, son. Long, 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 long. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All the way through. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, behave yourself, Bob. I'm trying. Now notice those souls, those spirits was up there. How'd they get up there? They were the saints that the Antichrist army uh, fought against them and caught them and cut their heads off and they end up, their spirit is it goes to be with the Lord. So they're up there 
in, in heaven and they ask God a question. How long will it be before you revenge our, our death and all that? And he goes and says, look, they were beheaded for their witnessing to Jesus. You've got to, I hope you're going to love me just a little bit. But be brave, be strong, be courageous, be a witness. But I might, somebody might scare me. Saints, if we can't run with the foot soldiers, how are we going to run with the horsemen? Now listen, I know all about that being scared. My mouth would dry up. I couldn't even open it. What's your name, boy? <laughs> you believe in Jesus? <laughs> Some folks are that way. Scared. Be brave. Be courageous. Be convicted. Witness. Remember Sunday I showed you with the crowd? We had the crowd of people. That Was that son? You just just jump right in there. If they, I have. I, I, I think the other day we went out. We must have witnessed at least to twenty people, and every one of them it was wonderful, great. The spirit of God was there. They took the tracks. They loved the Campbell joke. I told all one was how you know all those jokes. I just do, <laughs> but everybody enjoys them. Say, get your act together and get out there and go for it. Now, just watch the Holy Spirit. I might, bass, I might bypass 10 people and all of a sudden, I feel, all right, there's one right there. And boy, to see them laugh and smile and take the, and understand you're putting in their, into their hands eternal life. 160 messages. It comes from many of you and me. To show the way. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now I'm getting off the subject, but I'm just trying to encourage the saints. These people knew that they were going to be killed and they went out and done it and they captured them and had their heads cut off. In one way, that was deliverance. Don't have to worry about taking the stamp. I'm not going to take the stamp, but I don't have to worry about trying to get food to eat. I won't need none. My body's wherever they put it. So how many of you know that's good deliverance, yeah. you know? How many of you know a lot of our problems are right up there? <laughs> you know, just one swipe, your problem is solved. <laughs> All right, church, behave yourself now. Don't mess with me now. All right. For their witnessing and for preaching and testifying to the word of God and who had refused to pay homage to the beast or his statue and had not accepted his mark or permitted it to be stamped on their forehead or on their hands and they lived again and ruled with Christ the Messiah a thousand years. That's their resurrection. You see that in there? Huh? Read it. It's in there. They lived a thousand years in their resurrected body. Isn't that amazing when you read the scriptures, you can't even, some things you can't see, but yet you see it. It's there by the Spirit. How many sees that in there? That's, okay, that's those uh, saints that the, that the Antichrist army made war with and, and captured them and cut their heads off and now they're resurrected, now they're ruling. Okay, move to the next verse. I got three minutes. The remainder of the dead were not restored to life again until the thousand years were completed. This is, oh no, we're back in Daniel, I'm sorry. That's good, first resurrection. We won't get into that. We're back in Daniel now. Daniel... All right, 13. Wow, you're 22? 13. Wait a minute, you may be right. I may be, okay. Are we in 22? Wow, boy, we're moving fast. All right, until the Ancient of Days... 
came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High God. And the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom. So here we see in that verse, Christ came on the earth, took care of the war, uh, and the saints inherited the kingdom. Christ was king of that kingdom. Jerusalem. They inherited the kingdom. That's they the ruled of the world. earth. Right and Jerusalem in is God's mountain or city. See, the kingdoms of this world is not messing with man. They're messing with God. When you deal with God's people, they think they're dealing with God's people. No, they're dealing with the Father. When people deal with you wrongly, they ain't dealing with you. They're dealing with the Father. God's vengeance is mine. See, when you understand your position in Christ, you start praying for people to come against your case. You, 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 you absorb that real quick, like. How many of you know that uh, Moses prayed? Remember when his sister uh, Marion rebelled and, and, Aaron, and Aaron rebelled against Moses? Moses didn't try to defend himself. He went to the Lord and said, oh, God, have mercy on him. Because he knew God was going. Yeah. And God spared him. Look, Miriam said, stay seven days outside of the city and that, and that leprosy will clear up and she can come back in with the congregation. So just walk straight and everything is going to be all right. Time's given up. All right, so we stop there that the saints possess the kingdom. Now that's what God was showing Daniel for his people. That's the Jewish people. The church ain't even in there. But we know we're in there now. But that's another side of the story. But you've got to see all of that to the Jewish people. But how many of you know Abraham is our father? We've been grafted in. Okay? And that's another two or three sermons. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that the little bit that we've learned, and we give you the praise and the glory that we can finish it up next, perhaps next Wednesday night. Open our hearts and our minds. Let us be strong in this day that we live in because we see in America the many things that are happening right now in our country and around the world. Something is going on and we know that. So help us, O oh Lord, to line up with your word the best we know how, to walk with you and share Christ with those that are around us. And we want to thank you now for that anointing upon us to do that. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen.